So thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Um, I thought I would do things from uh, from scratch uh, instead of a work in progress, just so you could see my process. Um, I don't know if I'll finish it because we only have an hour. Sure. For that microphone. Um, <laughs> So we'll see how it goes. But I was going to talk about my process, how I start. Um, and also, uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to just shout out questions. Um, and I'll try to answer as I paint. Um, I'm a teacher, so I'm used to demonstrating in front of a group of people. They're usually not paying attention because um, they're teenagers. But <laughs> um, but if you have questions, please ask. And um, we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to paint um, something. Uh, a seascape, obviously, because that's what the show is about. It was seascapes. Um, but I'm going to uh, just show you. I, I do work from photo references at, at home. I do go to the beach a lot and paint on location quite a bit. And I have a, a bunch of little studies in my sketchbook here because um, when you paint from a photo, and uh, are there are you guys artists, anyone? Okay. Um, so uh, a lot of people know that when you take a photo of something, it really changes the colors. Um, it's not uh, at, it's not what it actually looked like in person. It usually darkens values, like the darks usually appear darker in photographs. And sometimes um, the color is even more saturated in certain areas. So um, even if I, I printed this this morning, uh, yesterday or this morning at uh, CVS, just so I had a hard copy for you guys to look at, this is kind of what I'm basing my painting on, although I'm going to change it a lot. Um, and this is how it looks on my iPad. And you can see the colors are really different. Um, and they're actually even more different in person. So I kind of have to look at the picture and, and kind of think back to what it actually looked like in person and make adjustments. So I'm not going to paint the some of it. Like, this is really saturated. The ocean is much grayer than it appears in this picture. So I'm going to gray it down a lot. And this um, wave in the foreground is going to be my focal point. So um, I also, by graying down the background, that'll draw your attention more to the focal point also. Um, but I'm also going to change the colors in that too. So I, when I use photos, I kind of use it as a guide. I, don't, I try not to copy because it's kind of uh, boring for me. So I'm going to change it a little bit. Um, and I tried to pre-mix some colors just to speed this up because we don't have that much time. Um, but I might have to adjust them a little. Just they look a little saturated here too. Um, so I'm going to sketch this out when I work. I always, I never draw anything with a pencil. I just sketch with paint. So I'm going to do that the same way here. Um, and I just try to pick a color that's kind of neutral. That's not going to interfere with the painting too much. Um, so I'm going to start just kind of laying in some of these other waves that are in here. And I put a piece of tape on here just to kind of help me do, I didn't feel like bringing a ruler. Um, and the horizon line, I am going to include a little sky in here. So I do have a horizon line. Um, and I just want to make sure that's straight. Even if it wasn't straight, even if I took the picture at a little bit of an angle, um, you should really, I always try to paint it straight because the viewer might not know that it was at an angle. And it'll look funny if you don't um, keep it straight. So I have that tape there to help me. And I'll take it off in a, in a little bit when I'm done. Um, so I'm just putting in some lines to kind of indicate where the different waves are going to go. Um, and I kind of always start kind of loose and messy like this, um, partly because when I paint, I don't want to, I kind of want to keep it loose. Um, and I don't want to just be filling in like a coloring book page. And if I made a really detailed drawing, um, then the tendency is to just kind of fill it in and not really keep it nice and loose. And the water's moving, um, even though I have it kind of frozen in time here, I kind of want it to still feel like it's moving. So I don't want to do a really um, stiff, like stagnant painting. So I'm just going to kind of start with maybe something like this. This is going to be my breaking wave in the foreground. And then I have a few waves back here. Um, and then this up here will be the sky. Um, so I might just start with something like that. You can see better now. <laughs> okay. So I might just start with something messy like that. And now I'm going to start blocking in some colors. So um, sometimes I do the sky last and I make it, I kind of look and see my, what my painting looks like. And if I feel like the sky needs to be lighter or darker to complement the painting. Um, but I'm just going to pop it in first just so I have something there. Um, I'm just going to make it really light so it doesn't take away from 
the ocean. Uh, usually when I work to, I have to decide if I want to, is it a painting about the sky or a painting about the water? And that'll kind of determine where I put my horizon line. Uh, if it's about the sky, I would put the horizon line much lower and, and have much more sky in the painting. But this is a painting, um, for me, I want it to be more about the water. So I put it pretty high and I could have I could have left it out entirely and just made it all water, but I decided uh, not to do that. So I'm just mixing up a really light blue. I actually put some green in it. Um, it's green and blue. I'm just going to block it. And because um, this is oil paint, that's why I'm wearing gloves. Um, some of the colors I use have cadmium in them. Um, so I'm just wearing gloves a lot um, so I don't touch it. Plus, with the paint thinner, too, I like to wear gloves. Um, it's oil, yeah, it's paint thinner. Yeah. So uh, I just try, it's a little more, it's a little, you know, more to clean up when you're done. But uh, I just like oil paint. I like this slow, slower drying time. Then with acrylic, my brother's here. He paints with acrylic. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> it dries way too fast for me. <laughs> and I'm a teacher, so I teach it. I teach. I do paint with acrylic. I just don't like to. Um, so I'm just going to block in the sky really quick. Um, sometimes I did bring liquid with me, which is a medium that actually speeds up the drying time of paint. But it also kind of sometimes I don't like what it does to the paint. So I'm not going to mix it into the paint. Um, as I originally planned, I'm just going to try to see if I could make it work without it. Um, so I'm just putting a color down for the sky. Um, and I'm kind of, I paint a little messy sometimes just because I feel like it uh, makes, it gives more life to the work than making it like perfect. So um, that's why you might see some erratic brush strokes and stuff. So I'm just going to take that off. Um, and I still have to do, try to maintain that horizon line when I do the water. So I'm still gonna have to try to paint a straight line, but um, for anyone that knows about painting, um, when you work with the landscape, you have atmospheric perspective. So as things get further away, they get softer and hazier and lighter. Um, so I usually try to blur the horizon line with the water. So I'm gonna try to do that once I kind of get the water in. Um, and like I said, I gray down the water quite a bit. So I pre-mixed a few colors to kind of speed up the painting, but I didn't test them. So we'll see if, I think that color might work. So um, I never really put black on my palette, except when I paint the ocean, because like I said, it's, it's kind of a gray down bluish, greenish, grayish color. Um, so, I, uh, that's the only time I really use black on my palette. And I think it's, some people tell you, if you're an artist, they say sometimes not to use black, but you could kind of do whatever you want. So, <laughs> so uh, I do use a little black. So what I do, um, this is the hardest part about doing a painting of a landscape is getting the horizon line straight, which is why I use the tape for the sky, but then I would have to wait for the sky to dry to do the tape again for this. Um, and I don't want to do that. I actually want them to both be wet because I'll show you, I'm going to try to blur the edge where they meet. Um, so that's pretty important it, to make stuff look further away. Um, you don't really want a hard edge between the horizon and the sky. So I'm just kind of resting my arm on my other arm. And if it gets a little bumpy, it's all right. Okay, so then what I usually do is I'll take a brush, a softer brush, and I just kind of blend where the two meet to kind of um, make that a little fuzzier. So sometimes I do it all in one stroke. Sometimes I really um, go a lot slower than that. And I just try to soften these two together. Sometimes I, um, you could even kind of do that and pounce and then go across. I just don't want it to be too hard of an edge. Okay. 
what I'm gonna do, so usually um, I kind of skip around a lot when I paint, but I think because of the time, um, I'm gonna skip down to the wave in the foreground, block it in a little, and then go back and block in the rest of the painting. And usually when you paint, um, you kind of do all the details last. You kind of block in all the larger shapes first, just to kind of get paint on the whole canvas, and then you can go back and put in details. And with waves, um, I prefer painting, I like waves that have this kind of nice lacy foam on top of them. Um, but in order to do that, the paint underneath kind of needs to be dry or at least a little drier. Um, so I'm gonna block that in first. That way when I'm working up here, it's giving this a little time to set up and then I could go back and do the foam pattern on top. Um, and then uh, hopefully it'll work that way. Sometimes uh, I do the foam the next day, but we'll see, I'm gonna try to do it you know, all in one session here. So for the uh, this wave in the foreground, like I said, it's um, my focal point. I'm gonna make it, it's kind of a yellowy brownish greenish color in the picture. I'm gonna make it just a little more green. Um, and what I really love, and it depends on the lighting, it depends on the time of year sometimes um, and the angle of the sun, but usually the where this top part of the wave here um, is where it's the water is the thinnest. And so a lot of light passes through there. So my favorite part is usually like that area right before, right next to the breaking part of the wave is usually um, where a lot of light's coming through. And then down here at the base of the wave, um, it's much darker and that's because the water's, um, it's like a little wider. It's almost like a V shape and the thinner part being at the top. So light doesn't really pass through that area. So that's definitely always a little darker. And, um, as you can see here too, the wave themselves are always darker because they're upright. And then the, the surface of the water is always a little lighter because the uh, sky is reflecting on it. So that's always the lighter part. So I just kind of keep that all in mind when I'm painting. So I'm gonna block in a few different colors for the face of the wave and then uh, blend it together. Okay. Pre-mix some of the colors, but I'm not quite sure if they're right. So we'll see. I might have to adjust them a little. Um, cut. So like I said, that part is usually the brightest. So I'm just gonna kind of block in. And again, I'm ignoring um, the foam. I'm just doing what I call like the local color of the wave. And usually, so I'm gonna make this wave a little greener than it was in the picture, but if I make it too, bright of a green, it might not look natural. So um, to dull it a little bit, I usually put a little red in with the green, that's the opposite color on the color wheel and that helps dull it a little. Um, so I might do something like that. And I'm just gonna block that in, kind of runs along here. Yes, it's kind of all about relationships, how one color relates to the next. So. Um, if I don't feel like it's working, I'll, you know, make adjustments. Um, and, it, and often if you mix a color in your palette, it might look right on your palette and then you go put it on your canvas and it's not right. So sometimes you have to make adjustments because of that too. Um, so I'm just kind of blocking in the darker part of the wave down here. Um, and like I said, this is just a block in. So it's, and I put a little purple in there. Purple is also, um, cause it has red in it, kind of a complement to the uh, green. So it helps darken it without, I'm not using like black or anything to darken it. I'm just using the complement down here. I may have made that a little too dark, but it's okay. Mix it. So I'm just kind of laying it all in. Then I'm gonna come back and blend it together a little better. And the top part of the wave, like I said, it's a little lighter. Um, so I'm just gonna mix those two together. Put that in there. Okay. This particular wave is kind of coming up this way. So when I blend it, I'm gonna kind of blend it in the direction that the wave is breaking too, to kind of uh, mimic that motion. Okay. And like I said, this I'm gonna do this whole bottom part and just kind of block it in, um, let it set up. 
that way I could come back and do the details on top. Then um, some of those same colors uh, are in here too. So usually this top part of the wave is darker um, and it gets a little lighter down here. And um, that's just from you know experience looking at it. So I'm gonna kind of use some of the same colors and block that in. And then um, this bottom down here, we're seeing some sand through the breaking wave uh, along with some of the sky reflecting in so it's it's usually like a grayish brownish purplish <laughs> a lot of issues um, when describing what color that is and this um because i wanted to dry fast i'm using a lot of paint thinner in this just so it evaporates faster lock that in and then it gets a little lighter so i'm gonna mix this in That that for now. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix the color for this bottom here. It's kind of um, again, it looks very different in this picture than in that one. Um, but you're seeing some of the wave color down there, and then like sort of a grayish, purplish kind of color. So I'm gonna try to make that quick. Um, sometimes I just mix up the bunch of colors I've already used um, and that'll give the painting some harmony. So I'm mixing together some of the blue and uh, green I already used and it's kind of making a grayish color, which is good. And because I'm seeing some of the sky color in it, um, I'm going to mix some sky color in it. And then I see some green. Okay. So this I'm gonna do, so even though a lot of um, down here was foam, I'm gonna just do a light wash of a bunch of different grayish colors and let that set up and then do the foam on top. I find that it looks a little more realistic doing it that way. So let me get a bigger brush. So I'm gonna put a lot of paint thinner in this and just start kind of blocking in. So I have like this grayish, bluish color. And it's a little warmer, a little greener up there. So I'm gonna put a different color up there. And you can see how translucent this is because I'm using a lot of paint thinner. Like I said, just to speed up the drying. Um, if I was doing this at home, I might just lay this in and then do the next step the next day. So I'm not rushing it. If I do it on location at the beach, which I do very often, I mix something in the paint that dries it um, faster so that I don't have to thin it like this quite as much. So I'm just gonna kind of leave that for now. You can see how much thinner that is than what's going on up here. And I'm just gonna kind of soften that a little. I like, at least in the beginning of paintings to kind of keep very um, soft edges on things so that way I can move stuff around. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that like that for now. Um, I might just block in a little bit of the foam shadows, not necessarily the lighter part of the foam yet, and then I'm gonna come back and finish blocking that in. Um, so for foam, um, it's not white. Uh, it's usually maybe maybe it's a couple parts might be pure white and even that I don't really ever use pure white in a painting if it's if the sun's illuminating something the sun's your light source it's a really warm light so I usually will mix a little bit of yellow in with the white um, to make it feel like it's being illuminated by the sun and in the shadows here they're quite like purplish to me um, although some of them you can see some hints of warmth through them 
Um, if I was, you know, if this was like a, a painting I was going to spend a lot of time on, I would probably try to get some of that warmth in there and the cool. Um, I might just skip and just do some of those purples that I see for now, just to save time. Um, and I'm going to try to separate the light from dark. So I have this, some of it's, a lot of it's in shadow and only sort of certain parts are being hit by the sun. Um, so I'm going to, I like using these really scruffy um, bristly brushes to do the foam so that it, it kind of helps give it texture. So like I said, I mixed up a color, but we'll see which one. I think I mixed up this one for the foam. Um, and when I paint the foam, that might be a little dark. I'm going to just put a little white into that. Um, you want to try to be a little, um, I don't know. I guess unpredictable or loose with your brushwork so that it doesn't look too um, perfect. You kind of want it to be really dynamic and have movement to it. So um, when you're painting like trees or something like this, it, you don't want to, I try to twist and turn my hand all different ways so it looks more natural. Um, otherwise it can, uh, look too perfect, I guess you could say. Um, and I'm, it, this might not make sense until I put the lights on. It might just look weird um, having blue in here, but that's basically the shadowy part of the wave. So I'm just gonna kind of block that in. And again, I try to change my brush strokes a little. I'm gonna put some of this in here too. Usually um, the wave itself is kind of casting a little bit of a shadow underneath the face of it. I'm going to put a little purple into this too. So I might start with something like that. And then I'm going to come back later and put in the highlights on there. But I just need something to work with. Um, and then, like I said, along the top here, usually has a little bit of a shadow on it. So I'm going to come in with a smaller brush. Squinting, so if you kind of want to see the different values in your paint in your image, if you squint your eyes, you could kind of see the lights and darks a little more easily. Um, so if you ever see an artist look squinting at their painting, they're not angry at it. They're just kind of like trying to see the values, or I guess they could be angry too. Um, so like I said, I'm just trying to keep it a little loose for right now. Um, now I'm going to kind of ignore this part for a little bit and come back, block that in, and then I'll come back to this if we have time. I don't know. I'm looking at my brother. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. He's an art. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, my grandfather was a painter. Yeah. Yeah, and they took us to museums. They like, and by by profession, he was a toy designer. Um, but he he was a painter too, which is nice. Um, but it was funny. He never really saw me paint well <laughs> before he died. Like, I don't know if he, if he was like, I was. I think uh, I was still pretty beginnerish when uh, when he was still alive, unfortunately. Um, yeah, young. And high school, I just kind of, well, I, I think I got into art because I hated music. I, or I didn't, I don't hate music. I love music. I'm just terrible at it. He's a, my brother's a musician too, but um, I just have no musical talent. So in school, when we had to choose between art and music, I just chose art. And I wasn't like a prodigy. Like I just was average, I guess. And, uh, but I loved it. So then I stuck with it, but uh, it wasn't something that like, I feel like I, I had to work at it more than other people. Like I just wanted to be better at it. So I put in the effort. Whereas like, I think my brother's more naturally, I think you have more natural yeah. talent. <laughs> you want to come finish? <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then in college, I wasn't planning on majoring in art or anything. It just kind of happened. I was like, I like to paint. I'll just major in art. 
So this face of the suede, like I said, it's darker. Um, I mixed up kind of a dark bluish greenish color and I'm making it a little lighter than it's, it appeared in the photo. Cause like I said, pictures can kind of distort things. I'm gonna throw in a few little hints of some uh, waves coming in from outside. So usually as uh, things go back in space, the distance between them appears to decrease so that, um, and they kind of look smaller. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do back there. Sometimes I put those darker waves in on top. Sometimes I put them in first and paint around them. It kind of just depends on what I feel like. Um, so I'm gonna block some of that in. And towards the top of those waves, something that was really nice that was happening was getting, like I said, it's thinner at the top of the wave. So some more light was coming through. So they, they were almost getting um, greenish at the top, which is really um, kind of nice. So I'm gonna throw in some little green at the top here. And it, sometimes, um, when I paint, it's easier to make things a little more saturated in the beginning, and then it's you could dull it down after. So sometimes I do that because, um, like, this is way too saturated. Um, but it's easier to dull it down than it is to brighten something up. I feel so that's kind of why I work that way. Um, and I don't want to put too much attention and stuff that's not really my focal point. So these are there; they're kind of like supporting cast, you know, in a movie, but they're not the stars of the show. So you don't want to put too much. Um, time into that. And I'm kind of ignoring, there's a lot of reflected light in here from the sky bouncing into the water. Um, I usually do that on top. So, and if I don't get to finish this completely, I, I did a quick little study, a quick little painting of it this morning so I could kind of show you um, that when we're done. So I'll kind of block that in. And now I'm going to just kind of block in the empty part here. And this color I'm putting down, it does need um, some adjusting. Like it's not all this color, but I'm just gonna start with this color for now and just kind of get it in there. That's kind of how you have to work. You need something on the canvas and then you could alter it. And um, so I'm just gonna fill this in. Technically, as the water gets closer to you, it would be more saturated. Um, and grayer as it gets further away, but I'm just gonna kind of use the same color to save time. The other day I was painting at the beach and it's funny, no one's ever asked me this before. <laughs> and this day, this guy asked me, he was running by and he stopped and he was like, how do you paint the water? It's moving. And I was like, yeah, you're, it's hard. <laughs> um, but what I do when I, <laughs> and I was like, that, oddly enough, that's the first time someone's ever asked me that when I'm at the beach painting, no one's ever asked me. They're just like, they're like, oh, that's nice. Um, but <laughs> what I do is, I stand there and I watch the water. I surf, so I'm at the beach all the time. So I kind of like have the way the wa waves break kind of memorized, like the anatomy of the wave memorized. But um, I'll stare at a, I'll find a spot that's consistently breaking. And then I find a wave that, you know, that I like. And um, every time it breaks, I just study a different part of it. So some, my, one, one time it breaks, I might look at see what color is up here. One time it breaks, I might see what color is in here. Um, so it's, it's kind of like, it's good uh, practice and it helps you paint faster. And um, I find that those paintings I do at the beach are just like, have a lot more energy and life to them than when, cause when you go home and you're sitting um, in your studio, you could have, you have all this time in the world. So sometimes having, spending too much time on a painting, you ruin it cause you kind of kill um, the life that it had when you were just working really fast cause you had to, cause of the time. Um, and usually for anyone that here that paints outside, you only have about, maybe three hours of consistent light, then the sun's moving, things are changing. So you can't really spend too much time anyway yeah, on location. And for most landscapes, you can go back and finish it, like just go on another day when the sun, like the sky conditions are the same, but with the ocean, it's really hard to do that because the waves are different every single day, um, which is kind of a good challenge. So like I said, I'm just gonna block all this and then I'm gonna come back and start putting in details.
And I might just need to look at it from a distance too. Usually when I paint at home, I'll put like a few brush strokes down, then I walk away and then I put a, put a few more strokes down, walk away. Cause that's the best way to see um, your work and how it's coming out is to look at it from a distance. It's a good exercise. Cause like every two seconds, I'm literally walking across the, the room or wherever I'm at. My, I'm a teacher in my classroom. I do the same thing. Um, before I do walk away and look at it, I'm just gonna take a brush. And um, like I said before, I like to keep uh, things malleable. So I kind of will just soften, take a brush and maybe just soften some edges. Um, so nothing has a clear, harsh edge, at least now. Later, I might go back in and tighten up some things. And when I'm doing this, I'm still trying to go in sort of the direction. I think the wave was like breaking just to kind of help with the movement. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it like that for a second and just look at it from a distance. Um, it's hard to see too if my horizon line's even straight from up close. Okay, so then uh, I'm gonna come back into and darken some of that. I think I put a little too much paint thinner. And if you guys have any questions about the materials or anything I'm working on. Um, all right, so I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna come back and, and start working on this wave. Um, I might put a few more details into that um, if I have time, but I'd rather you see um, me develop this a little bit more. Okay, we have like 20 minutes. No pressure, no pressure. that's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so I'm gonna work on this a little bit more and try to get the foam uh, resolved a little bit better. That might be enough time to then kind of work on this. So like I said, with the foam, if sun's hitting something, I like to put yellow into it. Um, and I have two whites here. One is uh, titanium white. White's actually a cool color for those of you that paint, meaning um, if I, it's, um, well, I guess if you're not an artist. so. Uh, <laughs> cool colors are things that have like yellows and reds and oranges and uh, I mean warm colors are yellows, reds, oranges and cool colors have more green and blue and violet. Um, so as things go back in the distance, they usually get cooler, um, which is why this wave in the foreground is much warmer. It's much more yellowy green and here it's much more of a blue. There is green in that, um, even though it looks kind of bluish. So the other thing that happens is if I'm trying to warm something, if I just use pure white, white's a cool white. So um, I have to add some yellow to it. I do have another white here that is, um, it's a replacement for lead white. They're actually, I used to use pure lead white um, and that was a very beautiful white, but it actually had lead in it. And the tube of paint was super heavy, you know, compared to everything else and had lead in it. So I, I was like, I gotta stop using this, but it's the most beautiful white because um, it's a warmer white and it, it's really tacky and you can almost use it to make like stringy kind of wave patterns and you can make beautiful skin colors with it, but there's lead in it. So I was like, all right, I can't use this anymore. Um, but they started to make this lead white replacement, which is kind of similar. So I use that a lot when I want to lighten something, but it's not as cool and it's not as harsh as titanium white. So I always keep both on my palette when I paint water. I don't really paint portraits much anymore. Um, so I don't need it for that, but it's really beautiful color um, when making, uh, when painting waves, I like it. Um, and it doesn't have lead in it. It's, it's supposed to like mimic lead white without the lead. So it's a nice color. So I'm gonna use, sometimes I mix the two together. Like I'm putting a little bit of that in with my titanium white. So I have my, and titanium white is so cheap. So I, I put tons of it on my canvas. I mean, on my palette, because I use a lot. Um, some of these other colors, those of you that oil paint might know some of the colors are really expensive, but that's a cheap color. So I'm very uh, liberal with it. So I'm gonna just try to resolve this area here. So like I said, it's usually darker on top and then it gets a little lighter here. Um, but also sometimes what happens is the sky reflects on this, this top part of the wave. So I usually have to do that in a couple different steps. I might not get to that part. Um, I'm just gonna darken it a little bit more. Let's see, I think that was, let me use this color.
then down here, like I said, it gets a little lighter. Um, so I'm gonna mix some light into that. It's really warm too in my picture. So this whole section here is usually a little lighter. Um, down here is getting a little cooler, a little bluer. So I'm just gonna mix that in. Gonna blend it a little. So usually when I finish this part, I'll put a little bit of a light bluish color, something with the sky color here, because um, it usually does bounce into that. But I might just leave it out for this demo. Um, and then again, I'm gonna go back to my foam. This is how I am at home. I have like a zillion brushes. Some people will do like an entire painting with one brush, but I have very specific jobs for each brush. So I use a lot of different ones. Um, but there have been times where I do a whole painting and I'm using the same brush and I don't even realize it. Um, so I'm gonna come, I'm gonna put some of the lighter parts in the foam, but then I might have to mix like an in-between color um, to kind of transition into those shadows. So I'm gonna I squint my eyes and look and just look for the brightest parts of that. Um, and I did cut some of it off. I didn't do this entire um, picture. So I'm just gonna start kind of putting in some of these lights and kind of creep down into here a little. So I'm mixing it into some of this um, shadow color just to kind of create a good transition between the light and dark. You can um, make little dots of spray by, um, sometimes I'll take a, one of these brushes and I put a lot of paint thinner on it and paint and just kind of flick it on and it'll create like little spray to do that. There's not too much of that happening in this particular image. I'll do something like that for now. Um, I do want to put, so usually what this makes contact with the water down here, it do, usually is a little darker at the base there. So I do want to get that in eventually just to kind of settle it down, give it a little sh more realistic shadow down there. Um, you know, grab a color now and pop it in there. What is this? Just a little hint of. And I'm also gonna maybe kind of blend it in a tiny bit. I just don't want like a hard edge there. Okay. So there's little cool color here where the wave was starting to break. Kind of carries up here. So I'm gonna to try to start laying some foam on top of this. It might be a little thin, but it's okay. So with the foam, again, it's it's light, but it's not quite white. It's like really, really light. Um, so what I usually do is I'll put like maybe a really, really light purplish, bluish color because that white, it's getting um, light bouncing into it from the sky. So it always is influenced by the sky. So it's never pure white. Um, so I usually take a big blob of white and just mix a tiny bit of blue in it or purple in it. Um, just... I save the really, really lightest lights for the end of the painting. Because there are some parts of this foam, if you look at it, 
Um, there are some parts that are really light, and then this is like very purplish. Um, depending on, and I, this is probably just printed really bad too at CVS, so that could just be their problem, but it usually does get a little bluish, a little purplish from the sky. Um, but that's why it's helpful to actually witness it in person. In the evening, that part of the water um, is so pretty it, because of the, that evening light in the sky is really pretty to paint. Um, and it has a lot of purple in it. Wet sand too has a lot of purple in it and blue in it if you look at it um, when you're at the beach. So let's see. Use this brush here. So I usually start with a slightly grayed down um, foam color and then I just keep making it lighter and lighter. So I'm gonna go with this bluish purplish color first. Sometimes too, these wave pattern, these uh, foam patterns, you could use them to sort of um, lead someone into the painting um, by the directions that you draw them in. And I just do it kind of randomly. I, like I said, I'm barely looking at the photo. Um, I tend to just use it as a reference, maybe for like the anatomy of the wave, so it looks believable, um, the shape of it. But then I usually will change and just paint. Um, in here, the foam tends to be in shadow because this is kind of coming over it. So the foam in here has to be a little darker than the foam out here. Out here, the waves um, at less of a steep angle. So it gets more light from the sun. Whereas in here, it's kind of a little more uh, blocked from the sun. So the foam in here, I have to make a little darker. So I usually use blue, a bluish color, like bluish purplish color. Um, depending on what's happening. Sometimes it might be influenced by the wave itself. So it might have some green in it. I'm just gonna go in and start putting a little bit of blue. And you can see it's kind of mixing in a little bit, which is why it's helpful to let that dry. But I'm just gonna go for it. Sometimes um, what I'll do, I'll see if it'll work. Um, I'll try it with this brush. Sometimes I'll take paint thinner especially if I'm at the beach. Um, and if I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll just take a clean brush and kind of pull off the paint and create some of that weight, uh, foam like that and then paint on top of it. That way I'm not mixing in, it into like wet paint. You could do something like that and then put your foam there. Um, and use a smaller brush. That's out, that's getting a little more light. So I'm gonna make that a little lighter. And with the foam patterns, um, I mess them up so much all the time. So I'll paint them in and then I'll paint them out and then I'll put them back in and I change them constantly just because they're random and it's really hard to paint random. It's, as humans, we like to, I don't know, organize things and make things like very repetitive. Um, which I kind of did there. You could even see, I just made like one, two, three very similar diagonal lines. I do that all the time. Um, it's hard to do it a little randomly, which is that's a random mess on the wave itself. So I'm gonna have to come back and change that. Um, it's a bad habit we have as people. I do the same thing when I paint trees. Sometimes I make like all the sh strokes the same and then it looks really weird and too perfect because nature is not perfect. Um, I'm gonna put some of that green back in, but then you can just paint right over it. So oil paint is very forgiving that way. <laughs> That's why I have to look at it also from a distance to see, sometimes it's not so obvious that you're being so repetitive when you're up close to it, but then when you back up, you're like, oh yeah. Darken that too. Okay. So we'll try that again. A lot of paper towels, this is how I paint at home. My paper towels are at my feet because I go through so many. It's 
So I'm going to put, there's a lot of foam up here too. Let me get some of that in. Um, initially, when I start a painting, I, I pretty much just use the brush um, towards the end when I really want to put on some thick paint, maybe in the foam or somewhere, I use my palette knife. Um, it's nice to have some like thick and thin areas of paint in your in the work, um, especially when they're on display, the light really bounces on the off the uh, really thick brush strokes nicely. Um, some lighter areas there. I'm just going to throw some foam in here. And here too, the foam goes up much more vertically um, than it does over here because of the angle of the waves. So that's something I have to always be mindful of. Maybe something like that. The bottom was mostly just foam. Um, so I could I could just kind of you know block some of this in. And then sometimes what I'll do is um, I'll paint back in some of the dark, some of the, sometimes you see like the sand, especially this waves in the um, breaking kind of on the very close to shore. So you might see some sand mix into it. Um, so sometimes I'll put some of the sand color down there, but I'm just gonna leave it for now and kind of go back and just try to work on those waves a little bit more. So this needs to be a little darker. So I'm just gonna try to maybe put a little more detail into this one wave and then that might be time. Um, so like I said, some, um, this lighter part of the water um, kind of bounces up into these waves even though they're standing up. So I usually do that on top towards the end. So I'm gonna just blend this a little bit and then do some of that. And then like I said, I'll show you, I did a painting of this this morning. So I'm going to take some of that ocean color. I'm going to put a little more white in it, make it a little lighter. And I put a little red in it. Um, it's a lot of purple in the ocean. Not overtly purple, but to an artist, you could see it. Not, maybe not the average person sees the purple, but okay. Um, so, like I said, you get sometimes like this kind of feathers up into here on the face of the wave. Some of that sky is bouncing into it. Um, and again, I'm trying to be a little random with the brush strokes. And even out here, there's some lighter parts, darker parts. Um, Up here too. I'm just kind of working some of this into here. And there is, you can towards, and this isn't really a finished painting by any means, but that's when you could start modifying some of the colors. So I do a initial block in, and then I might go in and, and see some different colors in there. This is um, some cerulean blue I'm putting in. Um, that I didn't have in my initial mixture because it is, you know, a little more saturated in some areas. Um, so I could go in and put some other colors in here, but I don't, usually I keep it simple on the block in and do some, all the fine tuning, you know, on the subsequent layers. There was a little foam on this wave breaking. Um, sometimes I don't make it as bright as the foam in the wave that's the focal point, just because I don't want to draw as much attention to stuff that's not the focal point. So 
I would never make it maybe quite as bright as the um, foam here. So I actually put some blue into it so I could just hint, a little hint at some uh, wave that's about to break back there. I'm just gonna grab, so like I said, because of time, I didn't think I was gonna be able to really finish this, but I do have a slightly more finished version of it that I did this morning. Um, and you can see, I just kind of developed some of the areas a little bit more than I got to um, here. So I did um, get a little more foam done. Um, and I think I just was able to, you know, add in a few more details than I was here. Colors are different, <laughs> um, obviously, because I, I mixed uh, the colors in a different lighting than I guess I mixed for here. Um, so they came out slightly different, but you get, kind of get the idea. Um, and again, you can see I blurred the horizon line just to kind of make it look a little more distant. And the waves here get a little closer together than here because it's going back in space. And that's usually, you know, how, how we perceive it. Um, so yeah, I guess that's, that's it. <laughs> Do you guys have any other questions or? Light yes, <laughs> I don't work in fluorescent lights. Um, so that's everything. As soon as I opened my palette, I was like, this looks very different um, than at home. So at home, I actually try to paint, I have um, a bulb that's supposed to be more natural light because that's the way I paint outside if you, that's natural light. So I try to mimic that inside. Um, and it's so hard to, to get the lighting right. If it's, a, if it's a certain time of day in my house, I can't paint because the light, just everything looks bluish or something's like a little off. So um, yeah, that definitely affects it a lot. And fluorescents are kind of the worst, but that's my classroom's fluorescent lights. So I'm kind of used to that. Um, sometimes I'll shut the lights. I have a lot of windows. So I just use the natural light as much as possible. Um, but you can kind of get the gist of it. Um, and again, you can see just by comparison to the photo, how much I grade it down. Um, I grade this down tremendously because it was just so saturated and unnatural. Um, Cause I mean, that's pretty, but just not what it looks like in the ocean. So I always try to gray, um, gray it down just a little bit. Um, but this is still a little saturated and, and I changed it from this brownish color to more green color. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of the fun thing about painting it is that you can do whatever you want to it. You don't have to just copy it, which is really great. Um, yeah, so <laughs> thank you for coming. <laughs> Thank you. And if you haven't seen it yet, my paintings are still up for a little bit longer next door. So if you want to see, so most of them are from here, but I do go to California a lot and I bring my painting stuff out there and I paint out there as well. Okay. Yeah. Are paper towels better than like an actual hand towel or something for your uh, like brushes when you're, when you're painting? No, no. Sometimes okay. I use a rag too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just because um because I go through so many, I tend not to use like when I paint other places, I tend to just bring paper towels. Yeah, yeah. Real. <laughs> my my hat's being worked at the fine. Mm -hmm. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, it looks like you. Oh, my God. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming. Uh -huh.